12 months ago, I reviewed the Viltrox 24mm f1.8. Last month, I reviewed the 50mm and I compared it up to the Sony 55mm. Today, I'm going to complete the trio by taking a look at the 35mm, which Viltrox have very kindly sent to me to test, and I'll be comparing it up to the Sony 35mm f1.8. Now, normally, when I film these videos, I use this 35mm on the Sony a7 III. Today, I'm using the Viltrox, so this entire video is shot on the lens that I'm reviewing, so you can see in real time how the autofocus works, in, especially in for video. Now, when I did the 50 to 55 comparison, it was slightly misplaced because the 55 mils about three times the price brand new, and yet it's an eight and a half year old lens. So it's arguably due a replacement and there were some downfalls to it. The 35s are a lot closer to each other. In terms of price, the Viltrox is almost half that of the Sony, costing 295 pounds versus 549. So right off the bat, for anyone who's on a budget, the Viltrox is winning. Now the Viltrox is available in Nikon Z mount as well as Sony E mount, while the Sony is only available for Sony. So if you're a Nikon shooter, then this one's a bit of a no-brainer. And if you don't shoot either Sony or Nikon, then I'm just going to presume you're here to see Rusty. Now the Sony is a tad smaller and lighter, weighs 280 grams versus 340 although the Viltrox isn't particularly oversized. But then the Sony's got dust and moisture resistance that the Viltrox seemingly doesn't. The Sony also has an AF-MF selector switch, which I absolutely love, because I don't have to faff with going through menus to get into manual focus. It also has a programmable custom button that I never use. Neither of these are available on the Viltrox, but then the Viltrox has a declicked aperture ring that the Sony doesn't. So video shooters may really like the aperture ring. Personally, I hate it. I've already covered this in detail several times in the previous Viltrox reviews, but suffice to say, I don't use manual aperture rings anyway, but the ones on the Viltroxes are just far too easy to accidentally knock out of auto and you end up stuck at f16. Both lenses' autofocus systems are absolutely silent. The Viltrox has a lead screw STM, which is pretty responsive when acquiring focus on still subjects, but it does struggle when there's faster moving subjects, especially once you get closer to the camera. Probably won't be an issue for most situations as this is not really an action type lens, but it is worth noting. The Sony on the other hand is armed with a linear motor, which is quite a bit quicker at reacting to change. Both lenses also have the option of manually focusing if you so desire, and I'm happy to report not only are they both smooth functioning systems, but both are linear in travel as well. Not like the annoying variable speed that I noticed when I reviewed the Sony 55mm. Minimum focus is quite a big difference though with these lenses. The Viltrox has a minimum focusing distance of 40cm, giving it a 0.1 times magnification. The Sony can focus right down to 22 centimeters for a much noticeably closer 0.24 times magnification. Now, just before we move on to the image quality, I do want to highlight a rather peculiar glitch that I encountered on occasions whilst using the Viltrox. And this glitch makes no sense. I took both lenses with me on one of Rusty's walks and I was constantly switching back and forth between the two. Now, there were a couple of occasions where I'd been shooting with the Viltrox and I'd taken some test shots and then I switched to the Sony to take the same shots and noticed the view was so much wider and realized that the camera had switched into crop mode on the Viltrox. But then when I switched back onto the Viltrox, everything was fine. It's bizarre because the camera's set to automatically switch into crop mode if it detects an APS-C lens. So the camera must have thought that the Viltrox was an APS-C lens, but it only did it on occasions. I couldn't find any specific trigger or event that made it happen, and it can't be something like the lens not being mounted properly because the autofocus and the aperture were still working fine. I mean, I can only presume that it's some random glitch in the firmware. Maybe it's clashing just with the a7 III, and hopefully it's something that Viltrox can easily fix with a firmware update. Now, moving on to the image quality, there is chromatic aberration from the Viltrox. It's got a slight purple-green cast in the outer focus areas, 
while by comparison, the Sony shows almost nothing, even with in-camera corrections switched off. With those same corrections off, vignetting is stronger on the Sony than the Viltrox, but with the corrections on, the Sony takes the edge. Although, even this doesn't completely clear it when shot wide open. Neither lens fully clears up the corner shading until about f4. Now, bokeh always comes down to personal preference, but I would give a slight edge to the Sony as I found the outer focus areas to look a little smoother. In terms of image sharpness, wide open from f1.8, the Viltrox is reasonably sharp, but there is a bit of lack of contrast as well as some ghosting, while at f1.8, the Sony fares noticeably better. Stopping down to f2.8 improves both lenses, although the Viltrox makes a relatively greater gain, which closes the gap to the Sony, with both lenses having good sharpness in the middle while the corners are lagging slightly behind. By f4, both lenses have basically hit their peaks across the frame, although the Sony still has the lead. I would personally say the Sony is an overall better lens. It's got slightly better sharpness, better chromatic aberration control, much closer focusing distance, a faster focusing system, as well as the peace of mind of weather sealing. But it's nearly double the price of the Viltrox, and I don't think the Viltrox is a slouch by any means. For the money, I think it puts in a very respectable performance. But for more money, you could get a better performer. Shock horror. So, you know, it's the pretty common, the choice between the two lenses comes down to what your budget is and what your expectations are. Now, if you are interested in acquiring a copy of the Viltrox for yourself, there is a link to it in the description down below, which for total transparency is an affiliated link. And that concludes this review. As always, if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you found this video helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.